Right now, we're talking about a large police response in the Sandalwood area. Let's get straight now to First Coast News' Jeff Allen, who joins us live from this scene. Jeff? There was a, there was a long time that patrol officers were talking to the subject. So he had threatened to hurt his wife and himself? Threatened to hurt himself to the officers. Okay. So and then did he threaten to hurt an officer when they came uh, to the door? He did. As officers approached him to discuss uh, his call, um, he claimed that he would hurt the officers if they tried to follow him in or try to try to apprehend him or get him. So he went inside and closed his garage door and locked himself in the house and were trying to ensure his safety at this point because he hadn't made threats to harm himself. And, and where is the wife? We don't know that at this point. Do we know specifically of any injuries or deaths at this point? Uh, do not, no. No one, no one that we know of is injured. His son's in custody. He's safe. He's been evaluated by rescue. He's with family members. Uh, the husband, we're still trying to reach, but we know he's inside the house. And the wife, the wife we have. Did we you have, get the wife out of the we house? We have not made she? contact with the wife. So this she point. has not been at home at all? Uh, since the officers have been here, they have not made any contact with her. There's no indication that she was here from the son or the husband. So we're still trying to reach out to her. Do we know that this family or this gentleman has a history with JSO? Um, I don't know. Uh, officers that were here initially that were looking into the subject said they didn't have anything on him, but that was very preliminary and we've been here for a while since then. And a lot of neighbors aren't able to get to their homes right now. Um, what should they be to know? There's a few neighbors that can't get there, I know, but um, we've reached out to the neighbors that are in the area and uh, we've evacuated some that wanted to evacuate, some that did not were able to stay. Uh, we reached out to the Red Cross to provide assistance to anybody who can't find somewhere to be and um, we're waiting for those. Uh, answers from the Red Cross. Do you We're know also here. I do not. It was domestic related. It was husband wife. Um, but again, that was very, very quickly uh, not discussed because as soon as the subject saw the officers, he went back in the house. We're hearing about a bobcat with a battering ram. It sounds like you guys are fully equipped for pretty much anything. Can you talk about what you have down there? Yeah, our SWAT team comes in with all the tools of the trade, which include. Uh, uh, vehicles that are able to uh, pierce through buildings if necessary, make loud commands and, and make contact with subjects that may be inside brick walls. Um, we have a very a very nice um, uh, group of uh, tools to use for that in, in our in our county. Do you have any prognosis about whether this will end peacefully? Um, I'm hoping it, hopefully it will. Um, we'll see. We have great negotiators. They do a good job talking to people and uh, calming them and we'll see, I don't know. We have sources telling us that the wife is not alive. Can you confirm? No, I don't have any indication of that so myself. So y'all first came out here to a domestic dispute? Uh, yes. Okay, and now you're treating this as a suicidal situation? Yes, the subject made threats to harm himself initially as soon as officers started talking with him and he was outside and he went in the house and shut the doors and shut off officer contact. And there are snipers on different roofs around the home? Yeah, yeah the SWAT team has a, a protocol on what they do and. The patrol officers, they do their thing when they get here and make sure we have eyeballs and looking at the house and, and exit points and things like that. And sometimes the subjects will give up or come outside and we want to help them and take them into custody as fast as we can. That's why you saw rescue here earlier. And uh, when the SWAT team gets here, they relieve the patrol officers and the patrol SWAT falls back. Can you repeat again roughly what time this all started? About 3.30 p.m. So right now you have made no contact with this wife. So there could be a possibility this wife could be inside that house deceased. Um, well, we don't know that to be a case based on the investigation so far. But you haven't heard anything about her whereabouts apart from that? No, patrol hasn't. Again, once this shifted to the suicidal situation, of course, we're trying to find you know the whereabouts of the wife, but the most immediate threat is the subject to himself, so we're trying to remedy that. And about how big an area do you have cordoned off here? Uh, about uh, five houses east direction from the subject's house. So that's, I think this is a one-way road, so we have it blocked off on this end and the other end of cavalry. And then we have the back of that same household, which goes down. Okay, so we are listening to a press conference right now from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, uh, which uh, first they responded to a domestic violence situation, and then it has now turned into a case of a man holed up inside his house. Uh, they say that it is a suicidal situation now with that man. His son has been evaluated. They have not been able to get in touch with his wife at this point. And the neighbors around that area, around that particular house, there in the Sandalwood area, uh, have been um, evacuated from their homes. He's, this officer said uh, five houses in either direction. And it tends or seems to be a very active situation where there are negotiators on the team, as uh, on the site, as well as a SWAT team. And so we will continue to follow this as you all see.